fighter pay and then comments about UFC potentially being a monopoly. And b before I, I ask that, I just wonder if generally, uh, you know, some of those criticisms irritate you because you guys are the ones that, you know, built the UFC basically from nothing, that were, you know, $44 million in the hole and kept it going and turned the thing around and made multi-millionaires out of fighters who were otherwise right. earning, you know, hundreds or, right. you know, barely thousands of dollars. To, to, to what extent does that, you know, some of the criticism get you to know, you at all? It could get under your skin a little bit, you know, when you, when you think about uh, the opportunities that we've afforded uh, athletes and, and what whatnot. Um, from a fighter pay standpoint, I'm proud of what we pay fighters. You know, I, I can remember uh, when we first bought the company, I was like, you know, Dana, you know what my dream is? You know, Dana and Frank, I can't wait till we can pay a fighter a million dollars to fight. That, that's what I wanted to do. I want to pay them as much as we possibly can. That's a sign of success. Um, that means that things are working, that things are going well. And at the end of the day, are you, are you going to make everybody happy? No. I, I guarantee you there's not a company on this planet where every single person in the company is happy with what their pay is. I mean, sure. it's just not going to be the way. But the reality is, is the UFC is the ultimate uh, you know, place of capitalism. And you, 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 you earn if you're successful. If you're a fighter and you become champion and you're successful and you're the guy or the girl that's bringing the people to come watch the show and that are buying the pay-per-views, you're going to make... The, the, the last conversation we're going to have is about money. Mm -hmm. And you don't see those, those guys and girls, and we all know who we're talking about, the, the top earners complain about their money. Mm -hmm. It's the ones that are, you know, somehow never made it, or, mm -hmm. or maybe were, you know, three and four and, 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 you know, just never got to that spot. But to earn the millions, you got, you got to get to the top. And it's, and it's, you know, different than if you decide to be a professional golfer, you could be on the tour for a long time. If you're not successful, you're not going to be a millionaire. You're going to have a lot of long nights and, you know, in uh, hotel rooms you probably didn't want to be in. But if you're successful, you're going to make millions, you're going to get sponsorships, and you're going to become a superstar. There have been some fighters who said they believe that the fighters get 10% of the UFC's profits. You said it's, you it's know, somewhere close. around uh, 50%. Yeah. I guess in fairness to them, UFC is a private company and, right. you know, they don't really know because you guys don't have to open your books. But, but we do to them. What, we do to them. They, all of our fighters have audit rights. They can come in and check the pay-per-views and see how many, you know, revenue was made and all that other stuff. So what, what percent do you think is fair? Listen, I think that it is, look, I'm a big believer in the, in the capital markets and the open market. And, you know, we sit down and negotiate with every one of these uh, athletes and their managers. And if we can come to a deal, then we come to a deal at the end of the day. Nobody's forcing anybody to fight. Nobody's forced, nobody told any one of these individuals, hey, you know, this is what you should do for your, for your life or for your right. career or what you want. This is their dream. And we sit down and, you know, we negotiate. And uh, like I said, for the most part, I think fighters are happy. Do they want to make more money? I mean, everybody wants to make more money. I guarantee you. You know, Tom Brady makes 18 million a year. If he said, "Would you like 40?" He'd say, "Yeah, that'd be great." Uh, all right. So here's one of the monopoly uh, mm -hmm. arguments that the UFC is basically the only league and the only team. And you know, you look at like American football with the NFL, mm -hmm. they're the league, or baseball, Major League Baseball's the league. But then there are all these teams that make up the leagues that mm -hmm. vie for you know, players to compete for them through free agency, which, you know, inherently increases a player's value or earning power because th they have more leverage. In the UFC, the UFC's the league and really the only team which creates, you know, the, or which, you know, affords the UFC the mm -hmm. leverage when it comes to negotiation. So that, that's kind of sure, the, no. one of the arguments. What I get that. Think? Listen, I, I think that's a silly argument because at the end of the day, um, there are professional, uh, there, there are events being promoted every weekend uh, all around the world. I mean, literally thousands of them under different, different promotional promotions. Um, is it our fault that we just did a better job and branded this thing and became the most successful? No. You know, we, we've taken that mantle and that's fine. Um, at the end of the day, though, there are no barriers to entry. You know, if somebody wants to go start a business and compete with us, they, all they have to do is go down to the Athletic Commission and get a license. And 
go get a venue and you know put up some money and start promoting fights and it's happened many times I mean you know Donald Trump was in the business Mark Cuban was in the business um, there's been a number of people that have been in the business with significantly more resources than we have and most recently you know Viacom owns Bellator which is you know as some people say the number two uh, promotion in the business I can tell you Viacom has way more resources than we ever dreamed of sure and um, but at the same time it kind of be like you know, another football league starting to compete against we're, we're, the NFL, you know what? given how we, big the UFC is now. We, ha we have first mover advantage. That's what we have. We have first mover advantage. No question about it. But with that said, you know, they're a viable competitor. They're out there. And listen, we've, we've been on fighters between each other many different times. And, you know, obviously um, it's a free market and we can bid them up and fighters can decide where they want to be.